بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين إن شاء الله today we're going to talk about multiple uh, subjects I received a few uh, questions from my brother and I found those uh, questions are, are very important some are uh, those questions are related to me and the way I give my lectures إن شاء الله I will answer during this lecture how I usually deal with uh, science how I research the science and why I I became to those conclusions that I always say, I will always mention. At the same time, he is always uh, he is asking me about the references. What kind of books or hadith or narration do I use? Uh, I have um, I've been almost uh, presenting lecture on YouTube for almost eight years, and and every if you realize every lectures is almost completely different than other. Uh, I always depend on certain lectures when I say for example during certain lecture I say this lecture is going to be very important because it will set up uh, the next sets of lectures of or coming lectures uh, I will always list my references those references either from the Quran al Karim from the holy book or from hadith uh, from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam or ahl al bayt or or from the narrations uh, Bayt or from a scientific uh, facts that are relatable to religion and certain sciences that I always mention I always say which one and which were related and I always show where where do they exist and which science because uh, Ahlul Bayt Salamullah Alayhim left us with mil uh, with many many sciences like Amir al Mu'min said I have a uh, 1,000. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he taught him 1,000, 1,000 signs equal to 1 million different type of science. And uh, because you know all all those narration and all, all those teach teaching they were written in books and uh, Shia they were attacked many time by their libraries. For example, in uh, if you study history in Cairo, they were burned almost 1 million book mainly mainly are Shia books. And uh, the sciences from Ahl al-Bayt, salamullah alayhim. But most of what I got, uh, subhanallah, uh, Ahl al-Bayt, salamullah alayhim, sent us all those sciences are uh, embedded inside the dua, the supplication. Every, each supplication, when you read it every single day, they always make many hints inside it. And like if you move from place to place, you will find many hints about each science because they know those supplication they won't be burned and they we will receive them. We'll receive them later on. Today, inshallah, I'm going to focus more about uh, about uh, the unity of existence, wahdat al-wujud. And uh, the brother, before uh, going into wahdat al-wujud exactly and go in deeper into it or dive into it, he's he's talking about. <coughs> I am promoting. Do I? I am promoting original sin. I uh, let me tell you something. I am not promoting the original sin. But I I get what you know uh, I get what you mean by by this I get what you mean by asking me this question I did spoke be previously about some many important things about why we were inside this uh, zuriyat this Adam zuriyat yani we were the inheritance of our Adam uh, Amir al Mu'minin salamullah alayhi mentioned one time in a narration that. There was previous before us 1,000, 1,000 Adam, yani 1 million Adam, and each gender is completely different than us. And then he mentioned each then gender, why, what, what the difference between us and them. And he mentioned that inside the Quran al Karim and all this known, knowable information, like uh, from the Quran al Karim, that that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal sent before us very powerful people, and he said to go study about them and see what what is the difference between us and them and inside this narration Amir al-Mu'min was asked were you there with them he said all Ahl al-Bayt alayhim, they were in a way they were they used to know him by Anwar by Nur and this is mentioned in the Holy Quran when Adam when Allah Azza wa Jal asked, Adam, uh, asked uh, the angel to bow for Adam uh, and he spoke about Al-Alun yani the higher upper people why you're not uh, why you're not bowing? Because are you from the upper people? Yani, yani, reg yani, this is mean that there is upper people who d they, they don't bow for the Adam, for our Adam. But later on inside the Quran, 
every all alamin they did bow for a different Adam and this Adam is the main Adam mean that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is what we call him Ahmed and you are you are saying where did I get this from this is from the Holy Quran when you read the Quran in different way in a way that uh, you when you read it in Arabic there's I told you previously there's many different uh, translation for it translation of understanding not just translation of language if you read it always and you put in your mind that every certain ayah is for is talking about Rasulullah is talking about Ahlul Bayt you will read you per, you will perceive the Quran in different view you will see completely different truths you will see that everything is talking about Ahmad and or Muhammad or Ahlul Bayt because this is mainly the test this is how we know Allah Azza wa Jal because we have this narration that say all the Quran is inside Surah Al-Fatiha, all the Surah Al-Fatiha inside Bismillah Rahman Rahim. If you read really Bismillah Rahman Rahim, what does it mean? Is talking about Allah, talking about Muhammad, talking about Ali, and then talking about the Bism is which is the name of Asma Alati, uh, which is Allah Azza wa Jal. He did teach it to Adam alayhi salam when he did the repentance. So if you want to take just Bismillah Rahman Rahim and you want to put all the meaning, this is mean all the Quran is talking about them, it's talking about their name, it's talking about their, 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 their uh, what, what exactly they present for Allah. So did I promote original sin? No, I did not promote original sin. I will never promote original sin. But I, I did ask a few questions pre before. I said, why Christians, they believed in original sin? For example, something has to introduce them to the original sin even if you study even if you study on the other side the indian the indian the religion every every part inside the religion it has a principle in islam later on it was completely understood wrong same thing like christianity it has a principle main principle in islam and later it would understand wrong they they thought original sin what, what I'm, I will define what is original sin for the people who doesn't doesn't know it original sin mean that every human being has this the sin of Adam because he disobey God this is what they say the Bible does not does not mention uh, the the fake Bible the one who were interpreted wrong it was not mentioned that in the same way that it was mentioned in the Holy Quran Allah Azza wa Jal in the Holy Quran in different surahs He mentioned different dimension of Adam And what, what I mean by dimension is a perspective of view If you if you read different surahs, I want you to read it While you're reading the Holy Quran You see many chapters and each chapter has a Adam But he's talking about from a different view What did he do from this perspective? Different uh, surah, what did he do on this perspective? The, for example, Musa alayhi salam one, when he, he spoke to him, he said, Listen to what I reveal, reveal through someone. In different surah, Allah Azza wa Jal said, Allah Musa taklima. He, Allah, he spoke to Musa directly. Type, if you read the Quran from the outside, you will see it is contradicting itself. But it's not contradicting itself. Allah Azza wa Jal, he wants you to understand every perspective inside this matter because he is telling you something. You need to discover it and see. Regarding the original sin, when the the Christian believe that actually it has something that made them believe there is original sin. This this thing is Adam himself, is each Adam himself, not just our Adam, even different Adam. This is the introduction of how we discovered the tree of Adam. They discovered the tree of Musa alayhi salam. You see, there is always tree, 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 and Allah azza wa jal he did mention where is this tree. For example. Uh, uh, for Adam alayhi salam he said it wa there was a tree but for Musa alayhi salam he spoke about tree and then he said in Turu Sayna this tree is uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam he spoke about the tree uh, Musa Adam alayhi salam each of Adams they they spoke about certain trees even Allah azza wa jal when he talked about Zaytuna la Sharqiya wa la Gharbiya he spoke about a certain tree and he said about this zaytuna like the olive uh, tree he said why it's olive and so on because it's it is green and it is not sharqi wal gharbi this is mean that nor christians nor jewish it is in the middle in but the, it has many depths each each of these ayahs has many depths and has many explanation 
and has many perspectives. I wish I have a lot of time to explain each one of them, but obviously we don't have. So we, we really need to always, I always mention, I did mention it before in a certain lecture. So I always show my references and I show how exactly this is, uh, this is, I, I got to it. Because it's always showing us about Rasulullah. When I, for example, when I say, let me tell you something about me or about, about any, any one, any, any single one who present a lecture or anything. Each anyone present a lecture that defame Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or defame Ahlul Bayt or defame the people who are with Rasulullah, certain people, or or defame the way of Allah, then you should start asking him why. But if you see someone, he is not talking something new. He's just adding new evidences, new evidence about a certain realities. He's showing you a reality from this different perspective, so you see what you believe on, so you see it more clearer. This is, you won't ask him what is exactly your references because here references are adding to your references. But anyway, we, let's go back to the promoting original sin. We'll go back because it's an important subject. Adam, alayhi salam, he, wa he wasn't only Adam over here. When Allah Azza wa sent him to this heaven, this heaven was mentioned, certain hadith that it's not the real heaven in in uh, the, the last last heaven that we want to go after Hello, uh, this uh, my this brother asked me where is your proof about that well it, the proof is the quran al kareem how allah azza wa jal he will say to the iblis go away you cannot enter and then he the devil he changed himself to he same he changed his shape to a uh, to a certain animal and then and then he go inside like uh, uh, he, and then he go inside this heaven and he start whispering to Adam do you really believe that Allah Azza wa will not know a, a creature when he sh changed his shape you did he doesn't know it, it do you think if you believe in this you keep believing in what you believe in that it is the last heaven then you are you are not contradicting the Quran or you're not contra contradicting the power of Allah Azza wa do you think like that or like Ahl Bayt said, this is like a, this is where Allah Azza wa Jal tested all Adams before. If you have a one million Adams, and Allah Azza wa Jal asked us to study about each Adam, what exactly he did, and what kind of test he had on Earth. At the same time, it's the only time that Ahl Al Bayt went with our Adam down, with his zuriya, with his zuriya. That's why we know more Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Ahl Al Bayt. We know him more because now we see how they are. How they acted? What is their morality? What is the Quran al Karim, the divine book? Even in the previous, even in the previous Adams, wh what did they have exactly? What kind of clothes they wear? Why, why Allah, why Amir al Mu'minin, for example, when he was doing a battle with a certain uh, Khawarij, this Khariji, uh, he took off his pant, and then he started running. Why Amir al Mu'minin? He didn't go and. Give, uh, and killed him because basically he was fighting with him. He was killing Muslims. Why he did not follow him and kill him while he ex exposed his his uh, private parts? Why? Because this is where the original sin is. If you see almost all the animals, even the previous previous creatures that inhabited Earth, they were conscious creatures. Allah Azza wa Jal sent them with their own clothes. They did not really wear clothes before. We are the only creature on earth that we have to wear a clothes. And this clothes is Allah Azza wa mentioned it to cover our private part. To our, he did not mention the private part. He said the sawatuhuma, yani the, the, the place where, where they did what they did inside heaven. There is a direct connection between your private part and what you did in heaven. This is the direct connection. Uh, all this is connected. You see all this is dot. You need just to connect the dot to each other. And then to understand why we have those private parts, why it's haram to look at the private parts. Many times, especially if you live in the West, the Westerner or, or any person, he said, you know, most of the private parts for animals, they look alike. Let me, let's, say, let's say 90% of the private parts for human beings, they look alike. Why Islam always have strongly pushed not look at the, uh, the private parts, the awrat? Why always it's haram for you guys? We say, well, Allah Azza wa Jal asked us to do so because it's haram, because it will make us do shahwa and so on. But let me tell you something. 
there are certain places when for example they live uh, the old like for example in the Amazon or it's it is it is a trial you know those people they tried if they always stay naked they won't have feelings anymore because they always see it they always see it their private part won't move anymore the same way it's moved for example for us when we see a certain a certain pictures or a certain naked ladies or naked men Allah Azza wa Jal want us to cover because of this want us to he said it is this, this is your sawa it is more than just being naked because all animals are naked for example and when they see each other they won't really they won't really have feelings the same way us have a feelings because we always wear it is from our fitra to have this inside us Allah Azza wa Jal he did not cover us our skin he didn't cover the skin from the heat he just put sweat inside that uh, you know when we sweat it, is, it will make more like a uh, if it's uh, to get a little bit colder the the skin or reverse side if we are cold it does not produce heat why he didn't do it because he always wants you to depend depend on something and he put this as, as a sunnah inside your body in reverse Allah Azza wa Jal, he did for almost 99 percent of the animals he give I don't want to say 100 percent because you might find something exception almost 99 percent 99 point 99 percent of the animals he covered them with certain skin that it always protect them from the heat or from the cold so if we really study this and he ask why we Allah Azza wa Jal created us like this if you go to the museum and you look the previous creatures like the Nasnas or the they have they call them different names each one based on a scientific place they find them or so on those genders different genders you know different creatures that were inhabiting earth that you always see them with a different skin this skin more will show them like a monkey but they did they're not like monkeys they're not like apes they're not like anything they look close to them because Allah Azza wa Jal protected their skin because they passed their test type over here we stand how what do you mean by they passed their test for example the different Adam there was a different Adam before us Allah Azza wa Jal told him do not eat from this tree he didn't eat from this tree Allah Azza wa Jal put him down on earth with the aura private part that it is covered and it always have to have a dual duality duality because now you can say okay you see I'm, I'm contradicting myself I'm actually not contradicting myself this is a proof this is mainly a proof I'm showing you a proof that always Allah Azza wa Jal he want to put a seed inside us and this seed he want you always to remember the original seed that Allah Azza wa Jal he embedded inside the sacred geometry you always have to have this seed inside us but the previous creatures we did not really know how many seed they have inside their private parts we didn't we did not know really we did we did don't we don't really know what is it exactly we do, do they have it or they don't have it because in reverse for example our private parts now if for example if we go in extinct maybe 100 million years later and then different gen genders i mean different creature allah Azza wa Jal create and for example they found certain bone like us they come take it and let's say they invented the computer and so on and they have a simulation do you think they will know what our skin is do you think they're gonna put the skin the same way like us or they're gonna put us the same way we put the different creatures are but we support this with the, with the, with from Ahl al-Bayt, Hadith Ahl al-Bayt. Do you think they will know what our private part looked like? Do you think you they will know? No, we they they, they will not know. Allah Azza wa Jal kept this this thing a secret because it does not have a physical hard bone. You see, like this bone, he, he did not make it hard. There's Allah Azza wa Jal constructed it in a way that it will be completely destroyed when a person or when a human, the humanity completely extinct. So, what is understanding? What is the origin? What is the sin? Did we really do the sin? And why we were created under our Adam, not under different Adams? Because we know that when Allah Azza wa Jal said, Kun, yani be everything is created immediately at the same point at the same moment everyone is created at the same moment with we, we, we and some people they think that this moment where there's still a creation inside like you know all the souls are created new no it's our souls are they are very old we have a narration for Amal al that say it's almost six thousand years old 
and it's not that the years of earth it's it's the years of Allah when Allah Azza wa Jal created us so we are very very old but this body is you know we're uh, inhabiting earth it's for because of Rahmatullah Azza wa Jal because he want us to pass that this test the main test that we did before and some of us did pass some of us did not pass but that's why we have we're having the main chance and the second chance related to something materialistic something materialistic is much easier than something spiritual when Allah Azza wa Jal give you a spiritual test it's much harder than uh, a materialistic test like the earth test so so uh, why a certain person can ask why we're not created like an asnas let's say before our adam why we're not created like that because because the ultimate justice of allah Azza wa Jal, he cannot put someone he refuse refuse uh, for he refused eating from the apple he, he did not put someone he refused eating from the apple and then he put him uh, with us so all of us who have to be created the same way like our adam it does make sense see because we were we have we have to be the same way our adam is and allah uh, let me give you an, i'll give you the proof from the holy quran inside the quran allah azza wa jal he when he spoke about adam he said you know fashtabahu you know when he spoke about adam he's he's when you someone you say ishtaba ishtaba mean like there's a lot of people and then you pick someone and then you pick all other people like him from the holy quran so you ask yourself, so Adam, was he alone or was he with a lot of people? No, actually he was with a lot of people. Adam, our Adam, he, Allah Azza wa Jalla created him at the same moment we were cre all created. But he put him in earth, uh, the first one, because he is, he has the strongest, he was the strongest one who has this feeling the same way we do, like us. But he is the strongest, that's why Allah Azza wa Jalla, he is, uh, he picked him from all those millions and then he put us inside his zuriya because we are exactly the same thing because if let's say Allah Azza wa Jal, he chose me as an Adam or he chose you as an Adam we will do the same thing like our Adam did because we follow the logic you know logic got, kept us to look at Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad at this level it is we are if you ask me is it better to be like this or better to be like the Nas Nas actually it is better to be like this because for the first time ever we understood who is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the previous uh, creatures they used to look at the stars you know when Allah Azza wa Jal said uh, this is from the Quran he said I swear by the by the place of the stars what and and if you know Allah Azza wa Jal said if you know what this swear I mean it is something very high you have to understand why he said this why he said La nujum. so even this qasam is very important and because the previous creatures they used to look at this stars and they look they used to uh, say that this is the way of Allah Azza wa Jal and you always used to get their sciences from it but now for the first time ever we're not looking anymore at the stars we are looking at them over here on earth because we did see them we did interact with them directly we get their signs directly from their from their mouses so i am promoting the original sins no i'm not promoting the original sins i'm just showing you that what is the original of what is the origin of the original sins how did it came this is what we call the science of mawahi okay. i am promoting wahdatul wujud the unity of existence no i am not promoting the unity of existence because I, I gave you alhamdulillah something uh, something no one no one gave you this one before about the wahdat al-wujud most of the urafa or most of the mutasawwifa mutasawwifin the sufis they always talk about wahdat al-wujud wahdat al-wujud saying that Allah Azza wa Jal exists in everything like your your salat is inside uh, in your uh, for example your room is Allah inside it in a way that he is really physically inside it Allah Azza wa Jal, we are a pieces of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what they say. And in one of one lecture, I mentioned the unity of existence. Why why the Arafa they got it this way? Let's understand something very important, brothers and sisters. Any anything that any person always presented, it has always origins. This origins always they based on it. They have a base and then they start building on it. And this building always sometimes sometime 
may, maybe 95% of time go away from the building of Allah Azza wa Jal and what Allah Azza wa Jal exactly he, he, mean, he mean by it when for example Allah Azza wa Jal inside the Holy Quran he spoke about uh, we are uh, Allah Azza wa Jal always in a form of plural so uh, the ulama think that Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking from the way the, the king speak Allah will never speak in a way that he say I or we or so on mainly he said this because Allah Azza wa Jal, let's say he does not have something called self self he does not call something ha he does not have a self like us we say the self of Allah Azza wa Jal, Nafsullah, Zatullah but uh, actually the self of Allah is a creation of Allah because Allah Azza wa Jal, he does not have a self if he has a self then he is limited to himself we have to understand more in a wider picture the more we go grow it the more we really understand it the the, the mutasawwifa they were stuck in this point the self of allah what is it exactly is it a pieces like when allah azza wa jal talk in the holy quran we 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 or is it just one person if is if he has a self then he is limited but they don't want to say he is limited because if he say he's limited then he's not god anymore so they were stuck the only way to run away from it they invent something they call they invent something that are called unity of existence and they complete directly connected to Allah and this is where the big mistake came in when I a uh, few years ago when I start talking about what does it mean unity of existence in Arabic I have multiple lecture about this I'm not sure if I spoke about it in English before I did I, th I think four years ago I spoke about it we s I start realizing the during this one that Allah Azza wa Jal the self of Allah is a creation for Allah how did I get it from a hadith Ahl Bayt if you read Dua Al-Sabah you see uh, inside Dua Al-Sabah at the very beginning at the very big chapter he, uh, at the very big uh, or uh, the very first uh, line Ya man dalla ala zatihi bi zatihi oh who did teach himself about uh, oh, who did teach about himself from himself <coughs> This is something, something very dangerous. Same thing when you open a Surah Al-Rahman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Allah al Quran. You see, you see ar-Rahman, Allah al Quran. I'm I'm not saying the, directly the verse. I'm just saying you connect the the way of, the the way of, uh, how how it is connected. I'm not saying the verse directly related, but I'm saying you see. Did Allah Azza wa Jal did teach us directly the Quran or the Quran came from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who did teach you the Quran so when he will say Yaman dalla ala zatihi bi zatihi so when is zatihi over here himself or zatihi over here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Rasulullah is a creation of Allah so Allah Azza wa Jal used, used Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he can teach us this so the unity of existence is not Allah Unity of existence is through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when you open the sacred geometry, you see everything was created from Rasulullah. Not created from Allah. What I mean but from Allah, from Allah physically, from the from Allah, because they say is the universe itself is a piece of Allah. It's not. So when I spoke about Wahdat al Wujud, actually I was speaking about the origin of Wahdat al Wujud. And I said in my lecture, if we don't really understand who is a Sayyid al-Zahra, alayhi salam, we will never know what is Wahdat al-Wujud is. And I showed proofs. Because Allah Azza wa Jal in the Holy Quran, when he, st he said, Allah Nur al-Samawati wal-Ard, and so on and so on, and then he spoke about a place where the Nur is from, and this is connected to a glass. There's a glass. Type, if, you, if you bring this, 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 uh, this ayah, or this uh, ayah, to the science, you put light and you put glass why we didn't do it because Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this science through scientists I when he spoke about Ayatul Nur please read Ayatul Nur look what Allah Azza wa Jal he mentioned he basically told you if you put the light inside uh, inside a, 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 a place and then you have to cover it with the glass and this glass have to be shaped if this glass not shaped you will see just regular nur. Uh, if if it is shaped, you will see different nurs 
from one nur. So new, what did Newton did exactly? He made a hole inside a wall. He let the sun uh, light came in, and then he put a light, I mean, a glass, and this immediately was reflected through this glass, and then it, it revealed a different type of lights. Each those lights. Now for the first time we understand how Ahl al-Bayt were created from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you don't have a glass, you're not going to understand that these lights are one. And it's connected to Allah Nur al-Samawati wal-Ard in a way that who is Nur al-Samawati wal-Ard? Is Allah Azza wa Jal in a form of al-Hadi. Yani what? He, he's not really physically a light, but he created a light for you. And this light for you is the origin of everything. So the unity of existence for the first time or wahdatul wujud from the theory that I presented is not from physical Allah because Allah Azza wa Jal wa Azza Billah is not limited to any physics but it is from the physical type of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then later a small problem came in, came up because before I want to I wanna just get this uh, situated inside your head. Because for sure you will ask this question. If we are pieces from Rasulullah, when we make a mistake, then Rasulullah will be affected because we are connected to Rasulullah, right? No. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned something very important inside the Holy Quran. You see every single theory I'm giving you, it is from the Quran and from the Hadith. That Allah, when He said, He created you from oneself. He didn't say He created you from one body. And he created from this this self a duality. He didn't say he created a spouse. He said he created a duality. I mean, this is how Amir al Mumin was created. And he said he broadcasted. He broadcasted from both two. He did not say he connected from them. Because broadcasting is different than connection. A, a connection, when you do, for example, a physical connection, let's say I, I have a wire now from the plug. And then I have a physical connection. When I, I have duality, right? When I hear them together, what do I have? A short circuit. What sir, short circuit is, is unlimited energy, which is we don't have. That's why we have, it will go back and it will blow something. This is why we call the blow circuit. He said, uh, we broadcast it. The broadcasting is different. Let's say now I broadcast energy to this instrument. Let's say, for example, your cell phone now, has, they have a, a wireless energy. When you broadcast this one, let's say on the other side, you touch those two wires, that, that are they are wirelessly connected you touch them together what's gonna happen it's gonna affect the main source of power no it's not gonna get affected it's only gonna affect the instrument that you have the power in you see this is the this is why it's very important to understand this subject so when you do a sin it's not gonna affect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from wahdat al-wujud because we are from him from his light we can affect only ourselves because Allah Azza wa Jal is broadcasting his wahdat al-wujud is not connecting directly the same old classical form that the scientists understood it this is the, the difference so for the first time ever wahdat al-wujud is understood this way we are, are from the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you can broadcast this light and go back to the or the, your, your original form which is Rasulullah himself because Allah Azza wa Jal, He let you go inside these levels. That's why He created all those. He created all those anbiya, and He He opened the perspective for you to understand whatever you want to understand from each uh, prophet, from these prophets. And I I I have many lectures about the prophet and each one how they are connected to Rasulullah, Isa for example, how he is connected Musa, Ibrahim, all those prophets, and Allah Azza wa Jal, He opened the door for us to have the same features we had, they had. For example, Musa Kalimullah, because he always used to talk with Allah, and there's a revelation from a person that he always answering him, Allah Azza wa Jal, he opened this door through our Imams, because our Imams are representation of what did to Musa alayhi salam. If you, if you think that when you speak to Rasulullah, or when you speak to Amir al-Mu'mineen, or when you speak to Imam al-Mahdi, is not different, if it's different than speak uh, how, the way how Musa, Moses alayhi salam speak to Allah, you will be mistaken because Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking to Musa through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did. And when uh, Musa alayhi salam, he met with Al-Abdu Salih, you know, in the Holy Quran, he, Allah Azza wa Jal, he never mentioned that it is Al-Khudr. 
الخضر was mentioned by رسول الله but what is the خضر he was he mad did he meet a real خضر the, the, the physical خضر that, that he is a regular prophet or الخضر the main خضر that that he is uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi because he is a he is a representation of the prophecy Musa alayhi salam and al-Khudr over here which is Amir al-Mu'mineen he is a representation of the wilaya that's why he said shatiq al-bahr al-bahrain you see the al-bahr yani two seas the sea of prophecy and the sea of wilaya this is when you look in depth about the Quran al-Kareem when you look you read it in depth you will see all those you will, everything will be revealed to you in this form okay. and uh, brother he asked an important question what is the hadith about the whale uh, living here in the United States uh, we had a Sayyid over here in certain uh, center he mentioned this uh, about the whale hadith al whale in Arabic and he really made fun of it he said you know we had many uh, Israeli Israeliyat inside the, our hadith or narration or so on and he made fun of this hadith which while this hadith is one of the important one of the main important hadith of how Allah Azza wa Jal created us but because because uh, your understanding and and his understanding and everybody understanding about uh, earth now we don't really see a big picture we only see the small picture we see earth we, and then we see the, the the universe that we live on. We're still making fun. Oh, there's no whale. You know, this is uh, from the Israelis that came on, and then they put it inside our narration. Actually, this narration is important narration because it is actually describing the sacred geometry. I will show you. I will show you this narration. Uh, <clears throat> I will show it first in Arabic because I will show you where is the source from. This is the source from Usul al Kafi. And it's just uh, yani part 11, uh, page 472. This is the narration of Al Wail. I'll show it, I'll read it in Arabic and then I'll read it in English. Hadith Al Hud. Ala ayi shay in hu. Muhammad and Ahmad and Ibn Mahbub and Jamil bin Saleh and Ibn bin Taglub and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam call. Sa'altuha an al Arda ala ayi shay in here. Call here ala hood. Fakultu fal hutu ala ayi shay in hua. Fakala ala al ma. Fakultu fal ma ala ayi shay in hua. Call ala sakra. فقال فعلى أي شيء الصخرة قال قال على قرن ثور أملس قلت فأي فع فعلى أي شيء الثور فقال فقال على الصرا قلت فأي فعلى أي شيء الصرا فقال هيهات عند ذلك ضل علم العلماء. This is the Arabic and this is the English translation from Google. I hope we can get it. Okay. Uh, this is the translation from Google. I'll, I'll correct if there is any mistake. Muhammad from Ahmad ibn Mahbub from Jamil from Jabil bin Salih from Ibn Abi Thabal from Abi Abdullah peace be upon him said I asked him about the land yani the earth and anything she is he said on a whale I said what whale is the whale what is it on he said on the water he said water on anything is he said on a rock I said on anything is the rock he said on a smooth bull horn I said for anything bull he said on, uh, on the rich, I see, and the rich means like the thara, you know, the the first the creation when we were created, because there was a high heat at that point, and this is where the thara, the thara, the, the 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 land, this the main land that the the main tree existed, call it a thara. He said at the point of science scholars and misguided. Over here, all the brain will stop. So I'll just I'll just present this in Arabic. Just for you to read it because it's from Usul al Kafi. You see, it's from Usul al Kafi, uh, Juz 11, Safha 472. Okay. <clears throat> so, from this narration, we, s we did see that this whale existed. And, f and uh, because of our ulama, they don't really have the certain science from the sacred geometry to present it. So, they, they were very embarrassed when they certain person ask them about it because they have two options either to say Islam is not right and to say this narration is not right because they don't really understand what is it the whale where did this whale come from if you open sacred geometry you see those two circles when they go inside each other there's the whale is inside I showed it many many times in front of you guys I showed you the proof the whale is over there so when, for example, where do we exist exactly uh, inside the whale 
over there inside it Allah Azza wa Jal when he said when he said that there's a narration that said when he created Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he was like a, a nur a nur and this nur is Allah Azza wa Jal looked at it and Nazrat al Hayba and this nur starts wedding because when it is a certain science that we, we won't understand we don't understand how did Allah Azza wa Jal look at him Nazrat al Hayba this is where Allah Azza wa Jal created the water the water is Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned it in, in the Holy Quran he said wa kana arshu alma his throne was on water this is from the Holy Quran if you ask regular scientists now where is this uh, arsh, where is this uh, throne he said you know when he created the water and earth Allah Azza wa Jal was there the throne of Allah this is something impossible this is this is a contradiction of understanding of Allah brothers and sisters that's why we have to ask the ultimate question where is this water so when you start opening the narration of Ahlul Bayt, you see that this water is not, does not exist on earth. There's a water that exists in certain, it's a, it's a certain place and we are inside this water. Because we are inside this whale. Because when Allah Azza wa Jal he talk, uh, talked about, when he talked about Yunus alayhi salam inside the whale, Zulumat and Salas, the three darknesses, we are inside three darknesses. This is the, uh, this is the main secret. When he told, when, why, why he want to, Yunus alayhi salam to go inside the whale. Why? Because we are inside the whale. For example, is it is it like a small whale that we are inside? No, it's not small whale. If you look at that, if you look at the, those two big circles, I told you previously from the sacred geometry, and in the middle there is a, this say the shape of a ship, or a shape of a whale. From those two intersections, Allah azza wa jal created those two intersection circles. He created Al Hassan Al Hussein. Al Hassan, he gave him the whale. Al Hussein, he gave him the ship. I explained why exactly in the previous lecture. Please listen to this lecture because it's an important lecture. It's showing you about each prophet and the connection between prophets. And because because absurd, uh, uh, one brother like asked me why why Allah Azza wa Jal he destined Imam Hussein to not have any water during uh, Karbala during Ashura. Why did he make him make him thirsty? Because there's a reason for that. For you to have to be the best ship on market, you have to prevent water to come come inside you. So water has to be thirsty for you to save people inside. Same thing. Your body, your body have to be sometimes thirsty to save yourself from different sicknesses. This is a science, brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jal, when He created the science. He put this rule on everybody. This creation is Allah Azza wa Jal made it for everybody. Why? Because this is the ultimate test. This is the divine test. This is a flawless test. It always have to follow rules, and these rules are are knowable. You we have to you have to understand them. You you have to know them, and so on. Type a person still can say, no, this narration is bad. You know, where did you get this from the Quran, from the Holy Quran? Let me tell you something. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Holy Quran, He mentioned the, the whale. And He mentioned the hoot. Uh, uh, not the whale. He mentioned the rock. But, but I have no idea why we don't really look at them the same way that they're clearly there, always and been there. We oh, Every single day we read them. If you open Surah Luqman, the Ayah 16, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya Bunaya, innaha intaku mithqala habbatin min khardalin فتكن في صخرة أو في السماوات أو في الأرض يأتي بها الله إن الله لطيف خبير. الله عز وجل I I say it in Arabic in English. Oh my son, surely if you see the the translation, even if you bring the the best translation, is always missing something. Surely if if it is the very weight of the grain of a mustard seed, even uh, even if you put it inside the heart of a rock, you see he he mentioned the rock. Or high above in the heaven or deep down in earth, Allah will bring it to light. Surely Allah is knowing knower of subtleties or, or He is aware. Okay. Allah Azza wa Jal here He mentioned the uh, rock, and He mentioned Habbat al Khardal, the seed of the the seed of the mustard, mustard seed. He mentioned both. What what does He mean by mustard seed? You see, we always go back to the old old origin creation. Allah Azza wa Jal. Why he created the mustard seed? Not because just the weight for it. You see, the weight for 
the master seed is the the main the main creation when i mentioned before allah azza wa jal when he said amir al mu'minin i am the bat i am the dot under the bat he represent actually a creation of this dot from uh, the seed of the khardal and why he named him khardal you know the khardal mean mustard mustard why he named the khardal al khardal he is alladhi huwa kharra wa dalla ala allah kharra ila allah wa dalla alayh you see in arabic in english khar mean like he completely went down and dalla mean like he showed he he showed where is allah azza wa jal in it is like a Allah Azza wa Jal, He created the specific creation just for this word. And this word He created, Khardal, Kharra wa Dalla ala Allah, just to show who is Kharra wa Dalla ala Allah at the very beginning. Who did really bow, who did really create the, what does it mean, a sujood for Allah? Who did that create, who created the sujood, the meaning of sujood of Allah? How Allah Azza, why Allah Azza wa Jal, He created something called sujood? Because it is connected to something called the tree of life. I, I have a, a, I have a lecture regarding this, the tree of life. You can see, you can see when you do the sujood. I have a, a specific lecture about the sujood. What does it mean? Because each section of the sujood mean a part of your existence in different universe. From alam al-arwah, from the spirit's world, to the alam al-akhirah, to the end world. So, the, the, the whale does exist, but he doesn't exist in a form of real physical whale that we live in. No, we are living inside a space, this space that 95% of it is unknown to us, but we are living inside it. And we, outside this whale is water. Now scientists baffle, what is it exactly uh, over the singularity we live in? Why? Because they think, for example, we live in this womb, when we, you see a uh, samawat wal art, you see the cone over here, our universe is over here. There's many, many, many multiple universes, and there's a womb, right? Covering all this. So they believe that there is only singularity in this womb. The other side doesn't exist. While Allah Azza wa Jal, He said we, lay, we live inside water. And this water is a little different than the other water we, we, uh, we have here. This water was created directly from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, and it is. It is a sea. It is in a sea. So immediately when you die, either you're gonna be in a ship or you're gonna be going back, going back to your original divine, divine void, which is gonna turn to fire. That's why fire created from divine void. Time. So all this, what I said, does have a proof. I showed you this proof. I'm not gonna go uh, deeper into Surah Luqman either, even though I am really. Uh, I really want to, but Allah Azza wa Jal did not mention uh, this uh, to one. He mentioned it twice in different surahs. For Surah Al-Anbiya, same thing. He mentioned مسقال حبة من خردل أتينا بها وكفى بها حاسبين. He mentioned that again in Surah Al-Anbiya, the Prophet Surah. So uh, the the hoot, the whale, and the sakhra, it does exist. Even you know, if you want to continue the narration, this narration exists. We call it the power of Qaf. You know the the Thor, Qarn Thor, mean like the horn. It actually it does exist, and this is mainly the shape of the electromagnetic field, certain shape of electromagnetic field. And if you have you, ha you want to have a duality, you have to have this shape. So it does exist. Ahl al Bayt when they speak about when they spoke about those uh, those uh, those things, they always give us. What is closer to our mind? They don't. They, they cannot show us the real picture. They show us just the closest things about our mind. And and you ask here, how did Luqman know about this? You see, how did Luqman know about it? Who did teach him that this khardal exists and existed over there and, and so on and all this narration? You see, so there is a connection with Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi. Has to be someone is teaching him this, which is will be Imam Ali alayhi salam because he did exist. And by the way, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him, gave uh, all this uh, wisdom to Luqman because when he's, he really knew who, who is Sayyid al-Zahra, sallallahu alayhi So Luqman may be the first one on earth, actually be, yani, different than the prophets, that he know the reality of Sayyid al-Zahra, the reality of this class. Because if you don't really know it, you will completely go miss your side 
and you will see that all the existence is made from Allah physically physically like is we are physically from Allah inside Allah Allah is inside us and this is very wrong we are uh, made from light of Rasulullah in a form of a broadcast like, <clears throat> Uh, even uh, he go back to the Eve first bite and Adam three uh, three bites. Let me tell you something. What is hijab? What is the scarf? Why a woman wear scarf? Did a woman before uh, us? What did we, before us like the woman? Did they wear scarf? No, they did not wear scarf. You know they discovered a place where uh, uh, I'm not. I don't really remember. I I was reading the. Uh, this uh, from a scientific uh, play from a scientific journal and they said they discovered uh, inside the cave a woman and with her children and uh, and uh, what what this show us exactly something very important show us first that they used to not bury them inside earth there is no cover for them the first cover Allah Azza wa Jal, he ordered us to be covered inside earth we are the first human to be covered inside all the human before us they used to just put them inside caves and they throw them like this and they leave them and uh, it, they were preserved inside this cave so most of the old creation they never had any clothes so there was no hijab for them so why Allah Azza wa created the clothes for us only and he created the hijab for us only because of what had uh, Eve uh, the first bite because what we say hatakat sitra hatakat sitra yani this fruit when she first bite for her there was a cover when she took this cover off Allah Azza wa he said you have to be covered because you did this first if Adam did that Allah Azza wa will send us will make it a, a sunnah that a, a man should have a cover not the woman uh, and then uh, the brother said in his, in his humble opinion that I should speak more about youth, marriage, drugs and practice. Brothers, there's uh, almost, uh, alhamdulillah, more than 70,000 alim in al ulama from the mashayikh. They really speak about this all year long. So someone has to always specify his knowledge in a certain way that to enlighten uh, the people about the uh, real truth of Ahlul Bayt and real truth of uh, God so I always speak about them in a in certain way that when you really know the ultimate truth nobody can alter with it anymore no one can tell you no we have to do drug for so and so why we have this marriage in this in this age we have a many the, the devil is playing with the fundamental truth of things for example now uh, when all our ulama always say the marriage is the best thing on earth always will give you stability or so on or so on they push it so hard which is right but at the same moment Iblis he's telling you okay marriage is right it is something very good to do it is something always good to practice but let me tell you something you can marry this woman for a year and then go to a second woman and third woman and make it like a contract right you can make it like a contract you still being married but why you always want to stuck with one person? So our ulama, when they always talk about why marriage is important, why marriage is important, they cannot defeat that you ha you should be married to one point this this person at the at the same time. You cannot just leave her and leave your kids behind you. When the devil always present his ways, he always alter the truth. So when I come to you and explain the duality of existence and so on. You understand the shape of the what is it Allah Azawajal when He created Al-Lu'lu' wal Murjan inside Surah uh, Rahman? When we, why He created them? Because this is the shape of the male and the female, and each one it, it does have a fit for the other one, and it always have to be stick into it because in uh, because the divorce is very bad, as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. So a person like me has to come and has to show you the original truth. The, or, the original truth the very origin so when a devil come and start altering the laws he's telling you okay you can be married but why only marry to one person just throw him uh, like every few years you have to have a contract with certain person and even I heard this one from Muslims some of them they said a marriage should be 
a contract like for example four or five years and then you have to enter a contract and go to someone else it is coming this is coming to the united states in the coming years five four five six years from now we're gonna have a law a state like this a person can have a contract with a, another person as a marriage for certain years because the devil is altering the truth about the marriage is a if a person like me does not come and show you the reality why we have some something called marriage I, the devil we will alter the same way same way for the people who wear a scarf if you don't tell the women why we wear a scarf not why Allah, not how Allah uh, you, you say why Allah Azawajal created the scarf in the original form you show them the truth from the, the mathematics why do we have something called sacred geometry if we don't say all these truths we don't say all the sciences uh, we don't we're not gonna have a hijab five years from now believe me we have many Muslims uh, uh, ulama from the different school of thought even there's some Shia now they're coming the same way they're saying Allah Azza wa did not mention the hijab inside the Quran so if we don't have a proof from other sciences that hijab does exist five years from now believe me no we're not gonna have any alim except our maraja that will always say hijab exists so this knowledge I'm presenting is more important than what you look at now because it's going giving you the truths, the original truths of things not just the surfaces like you're talking about uh, and uh, the brothers, he's, uh, on the other side he's giving me uh, he's giving me more like what I have to do or so on or how, how can I do or indulge myself he's giving me like what we say a nasiha, what we do and how I do uh, to, to become a better lecturer uh, so thank you guys thank you brothers and sisters for uh, listening to this lecture hopefully it did answer many questions you had before inshallah i'm always open for all your questions uh, all your important questions bismillah rahman rahim wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bilhaq wa tawasaw bilsabr wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh